In this example, we're going to get a little practice working with Venn diagrams. What we're going to do is we're going to construct Venn diagrams to basically prove this identity right here. And we're going to work with two of them. In this first one, we're going to show that A difference B, so A and B are sets obviously, is equal to A difference the quantity A intersect B. So when you use Venn diagrams to verify relationships like this, you might be tempted to just go ahead and just sketch one Venn diagram for this, sketch one Venn diagram for this, and then show that they're equal. And that's not a horrible thing to do, but to really kind of prove that these identities are true, constructing a sequence of Venn diagrams does a better job kind of explaining that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sequence of Venn diagrams for each of these quantities. Up here, I'm going to use these three Venn diagrams to take care of sketching this. And then down here, I'm going to use these Venn, three Venn diagrams to sketch a Venn diagram for this set. And then when I'm done, these two Venn diagrams over here will be the same, and I'll have convinced myself that this identity is indeed true. So how am I going to do this? So I'm going to start off by using this Venn diagram and sketching the Venn diagram for A. And that's pretty easy, right? All you have to do is shade in all of A. So that's almost trivial. On this next Venn diagram, I'm going to shade in the Venn diagram for the set B. Okay, so that's the set B, obviously. And then in this last, last Venn diagram, I can now easily construct a Venn diagram for A difference B by looking at the first two things I've done. A difference B consists of everything that's in A, but not in B. So when I sketch this, I'm going to sketch everything that's in A, but I'm not going to include anything that's in my second Venn diagram. So by looking at this and looking at this, this final Venn diagram is now obvious because I've shaded in everything that is in A, but taken out all the parts that are in B. Basically, I've taken out this little sliver right in here. Okay, So this is how I like to do these types of things. Some people jump right to this, which isn't horrible, but it kind of skips out, skips these intermediate steps and the sequence of thought that goes into really constructing this final thing. So I like to do it kind of step by step. Let's do a similar thing for our other set that we're working with, A difference quantity A intersect B. So the first thing I'm going to do is sh do a Venn diagram for A. So again, that's very easy. I'm going to shade that in. In the second Venn diagram, I'm going to shade in A intersect B. So that's all the area that is common to A and B. So that's where they overlap, right there in the middle. And then this final one, I need to do A difference the quantity A intersect B. So that means I need to take A and not shade in this part. Okay, so again, that's going to look like this. So I've now created a Venn diagram, A difference quantity A intersect B. And if I compare it to what I had just a minute ago for A difference B, these are obviously the same thing. So I've established that these identity, this identity is true by using Venn diagrams. Let's do another one. Let's do A union quantity B intersect C is equal to A union B intersect A union C. This is almost a distributive law for the set operation, right? We know about the distributive law for our logic operators and and or. This is something very analogous for the set operator, in, for the set operator of uh, intersection and ors here. So let's go ahead and do the same process we did before. Let's create a sequence of three for the left side, and let's create a sequence of three Venn diagrams for the right side. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this identity right here. So I need to sketch first A, and now I need to sketch B intersect C. So what is B intersect C? That's all the common area that between B and C, so that's that little sliver right there. When I union these two Venn diagrams, I'm going to combine their areas I'm going to find all the common elements, so I'm going to shade in A and this sliver. So I shade in A and I shade in that sliver. So this final Venn diagram is the union of these first two that I've sketched. Let's do similar work for the other identity, this identity right here. So I need to shade in A union B, so that's all the common area between A and B. So this is the set A union B. I need to shade in or create a Venn diagram for A union C, so that's all of this area. 
And now, when I intersect these two quantities, I need to take this, intersect with this for my final expression. What do I do? I need to find all of the shaded areas that is common between these two things. That's what it means to do the intersection. What area is in this set and in this set? Where do they overlap? Well, that's obvious to see. All of A is in there, and also this sliver right in here is in there, so I've shaded that in. So I've now created a Venn diagram for A union B intersected with the quantity A union C. And again, now when I compare these, it's very clear that these two Venn diagrams are exactly the same, and we have established the identity that we wanted to establish. And this is just my little kind of thing that I've been copying and pasting. And when you do your homework, what I would do is create a Venn diagram like this and be able to copy and paste it into paint and fill in things and then save off the Venn diagrams you create. But having a blank one like this is very useful as you work the homework for problems like this.